Oh, you see a little bit of power supply down there. Power. It's not going to look so great. That's good. How's that? Try the other way. Yeah. Thank you. When you're ready, David, we can go. Thank you, John. Oh, <laughs> they're being polite here at the 11th hour. And when you're ready, Bobby, you can go. All right. We have speed? Well, Judd, here we are again. Last time was St. Elmo's Fire, and uh, here you are now in an entirely different sort of thing from the hip. You know, when I first heard about it, Judd, not knowing anything, I thought from the hip, some kind of Western, Western thing. Yeah, that's what I said. Is that a Western? <laughs> but let's have everybody understand right now this is not a Western. Um, your father is an attorney. I remember that from our previous conversations. And your mother, is she still in politics? Yes. Yeah. So I'm very curious, given the nature of this, uh, where you play a young, unorthodox attorney, I'm very eager to find out what kind of reaction your father will have to it. Well, my father hasn't seen the film, but he has read the screenplay. And I think uh, that he likes it, and he thinks that it's funny. And there are certain things that maybe would not happen in real life in a real courtroom, but um, the story as a whole is very believable in that legal sense for my dad. And I guess that I, since my dad is a lawyer and I didn't grow up to become a lawyer, I guess this was the second best thing. I could play a lawyer. Ode to dad. Yeah. <laughs> is there any basis in fact for this kind of unorthodox behavior? Definitely, definitely. Uh, and throughout history, there have always been a number of colorful lawyers who have done various things. Uh, Clarence Darrow once put a wire in his cigar. So when the other lawyer was giving his closing statement, he just sat there smoking the cigar and the ash wouldn't fall. This long cigar. So the jury wasn't even listening to the other lawyer. They were watching Darrow's ash. So there's always been that type of theatrical presentation because as a lawyer you have to convince the jury. The jury is in a sense an audience. You have to convince them that your point of view is the right point of view. So lawyers in a courtroom situation are actors. That, that brings up uh, something that I wanted to discuss a little bit and that is uh, we know that the courtroom is a stage and has been always um, certainly for many kinds of trials. But uh, do you think that that is a good thing and particularly if there's a little bit of unorthodox behavior then it will escalate, escalate. Uh, is there a danger that the whole thing could just become a mockery? I think that the danger is that maybe a lot of our present legal system has already become a mockery. Um, I think that by using dramatic tactics to make your point, I don't think that hurts the law. I think the only thing that hurts the law is when the truth gets hidden by the law, is obscured by the law, as opposed to being illuminated by the law. So I'm not sure that the way you go about defending someone is right or wrong, but if they're innocent or they're guilty, that's where the meat of the, the, meat of the story is. Were you ever a Perry Mason fan? Did you like that sort of thing? A, l a little bit. I mean, not that much. Because I mean, you always knew what was going to happen. I mean, Perry Mason, you always knew, yeah, 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 they're going to break down, they're going to confess. Perry always wins. What about Mr. Berger? That guy, Mr. Berger, the other lawyer in Perry Mason, he never won, did he? <laughs> I'd like to say I'm sorry to, to Mr. Berger out there. Thank you. <laughs> Another thing that your movie, From the Hip, deals with is that um, should an attorney have the right to back out of a case or refuse a case where he believes the person is guilty. See, I think that a lawyer should back out if he believes that the person is guilty and that he can't defend the client. However, in our system of justice, even if someone is guilty, even if someone is pleading guilty, they deserve counsel and they have a right to counsel. And even if they can't afford counsel, counsel will be appointed for them. And I think that's a great part of our system of justice, but certain lawyers can't defend people that they know are guilty, and certain lawyers can because they know that the system must be upheld. Uh, Robin Weathers, the character I play, finds that it's hard for him to do. It's hard for him to do the professionally ethical thing when it's in violation of his personal ethic. How was it working with John Hurt? Oh my God. John Hurt, 
He's the best actor I've ever seen that close. I mean, up close. I mean, he was great. And I think that I am, in, I am indebted to him because my work, if it's good, is good because of the people around me. Uh, John Hurt just forced my work to be better. Uh, he was like my dance partner, sort of. He was Fred Astaire. He like, forced me to be a good dancer. El Elizabeth Perkins is magnificent. Darren McGavin, Dan Monahan, David Allen Greer, Nancy Marchand. Everyone is great. I really loved it. What do you think it is about John Hurt, though? It, he seems to, you kind of have him in a special little place. What is it about him? What does he do that impresses you so much? He just, his work is very clean. It's very simple and expressive. He doesn't muddle it with his own personality. He gets his personality out of the way. He serves the material. And it's just exciting to watch, to see, to actually be there live watching it. What sort of, uh, when you would see this, Judd, what, what happened to you then? I mean, if you were a little bit in awe of him, what then did you do? Oh, I didn't feel that I was in awe of him. I felt excited about the fact. It's like getting a ringer on your baseball team. You know what I mean? You're not nervous. Oh, my God, he can hit better than I can. You're excited about the fact that the guy playing third base is a genius. So I was excited. I wasn't apprehensive. Glad to have him on your team. Definitely. I want him on my team. Were other people considered for that role? I don't know. I don't know. But not in my mind. <laughs> But, but the movie really started as a project for you, didn't it? Well, I think that the movie started as a project for the director, Bob Clark, that he was definitely attached to it before I came in. I was like eighth on a list of seven, I think. Well, we'll tell everybody again, From the Hip is not a Western. No, it's not a Western. Not <laughs> they a should Western. get that from, from our conversation by this time. Judd, I hope it does well for you. Uh, and uh, I hope that we'll have a chance to see you again. Do you have another film lined up? I'm not sure yet. I've got it penciled in. I don't have it in ink yet. Okay. Well, whatever. We hope uh, that uh, we'll meet you again under Thank these kinds much. of circumstances. Good to see you. Thank you. Very nice interview. Oh, thanks. thanks. Judd, your father is an attorney. What kinds of reactions do you think he'll have to this movie? Have you been getting the reaction from people that from the hip must be a Western? Do these unorthodox, do these unorthodox tactics that uh, your character has in the movie, do they have any basis in fact? Your movie brings up a question that uh, we've always had a little histrionics in the courtroom from time to time, but if that escalates and escalates, uh, doesn't that make a mockery of the courtroom? Another question your movie brings up is whether or not an attorney should have the right to refuse a case if he thinks the client is guilty. What was it like working with John Hurt? What is it about John Hurt's way of working? Okay. Um, hmm. Okay.